Welcome to the Marvel Sports Worldwide Podcast, where we discuss and analyze your favorite Marvel sports. From JMR Marble League to all go do tournaments, we'll make sure you never miss the action. All Marble Sports, all the time, right here on the MSW Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Marvel Sports Worldwide Podcast. My name is not Commander Woff, it's Brendan. And my name is not Brendan, it's Commander Woff. There we go. Ah, you caught on there. I, I still don't brief you. I should brief you on these things so they sound smoother. But I know, no, I, I kind of think it. it's more fun when you don't tell me because then yeah. I have to I have to get like work on the fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to just be like, OK, OK, what what's stupid? What stupid shit is he about to do? And then I don't I know. You with some like random shit. So anyway, guys, welcome to the show. This is the Marvel Sports Worldwide podcast, um, which I just said a second ago. And um Man, last week last week was a heavy episode, so it's kind of like, how are we going to bounce back from that? Um, but we're going to bounce back pretty well. We have a lot of plans to talk about just Marble-related things this week, and we're going to have a very special guest, guest on who uh, previously was part of the JMRC. So it's going to be a good episode. But something I do want to point out here in the intro that I just thought was uh, funny is that I was watching the Marble Rally race um for the first one back on the sand which by the way red number three man I, I don't know what's going on he started out so bad and all of a sudden he's starting yeah. to win and we'll get close to it i mean man maybe maybe it's like maybe it's like breaking in a new glove he just like rolled enough and now he's like really ready so um he's been doing well but but just a lot of the craziness in that race nine where marbles were flying off the track and just hearing greg get so just surprised he would just be trying he'd be trying to commentate trying to talk about what's going on and then he would have to be like oh and super ball is in the crowd and it was just funny to hear him like he almost seemed like he was like a little off rhythm not in a bad way but just in like there was just so much craziness in that race that he was like he was just mind blown and trying to keep up with all just the the random uh, mess uh, messes during, throughout the race. So that was really funny. I really, <laughs> it's funny to hear Greg just be like so surprised at what's going on, even after doing Marvel Sports for I guess five years now, right? Um, I mean, I we've been doing this Marvel Sports like podcast for like over two years now, and we still get surprised by stuff. So yeah, I guess so. And Marvel Sports is we've talked. Episode 10, man, the Chaos Theory of Marble Sports. And maybe we'll do, like, another Chaos Theory episode so we have, like, an updated uh, updated intelligence or whatever. I don't know. But, I'll get um, my whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. We'll, like, we'll, we'll re-diagram it. But, um, no, yeah, Marble Sports Chaos, that's what it's all about. That that just unpredictability of the, the rolling spherical glass balls, man, That's that pulls you in. And you can never you can never guess what's going to happen. You, you can't. And, um... Uh, except for race 11 of the Savage Speedway, where as soon as the qualifiers was over, I uh, I knew what you you and everybody knew what was going to happen. Everybody was knew. Come on, I mean, you yeah. really think Red Eye was going to win that one after being in pole position? Go simple. All yeah. right, that was that was yeah. simple work. Elementary even. Um, Elementary, my dear. Yeah, I still need to get that damn right. monocle. <laughs> no, you do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely. gotta just get. You know, I'll, I'll do it. Right. I'll get it on my list. <laughs> Wait, I put, it on, put it on your list of things to do. Yeah, and get like. I'll um, buy that monocle. Yeah, get like a little. Uh, put one on your marble. Your marble graphics, so you really look like a marble sports connoisseur. Um, that was a good way to say that. Uh, anyways, so that's gonna be the intro. So I hope you enjoyed that. So let's go to the news. Johnny Marble has things to say. Marbles be rolling, and he's be talking about them's marbles that's be rolling. And on the other side of the news, we got Focaf, the guest uh, from the JMRC, coming at us with marble-related talk. And uh, oh, we're gonna hit that mailbag first as well. So we'll see you after the news. <laughs> Sports fans, I am Johnny Marble, and as always, I'm coming to you for MSW, sponsored by the Marble Hotel, 
whatever you roll will be there. Race 11 of Marby the One Season 2 marked the return of the Savage Speedway. And it was easily the most one-sided race in Marby the One history. From the beginning all the way to the end, Red Eye never lost their lead and ultimately won with a staggering 8.18 second lead over Starry who finished in second. Ocean then followed up in third and Prem close behind in fourth. However, Red Eye didn't just win by a wide margin, oh no 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 no. They are also the first marble to get the maximum points possible in a race, receiving the bonus points for both starting in pole position and achieving the fastest lap. With only one race left, the Crazy Cat Sides are now guaranteed to win Season 2 of Marvel 1, and Red Eye is also guaranteed to win the Racers Championship. All that's left now is to figure out who will claim those last two podium spots. So make sure to tune in this Saturday to find out. I'm your host, Johnny Marble. You are the best fans in the world. Let's kick it on back and continue now with the podcast. The news is over, but the Marble Sports discussion is not. Thank you, Johnny Marble, for bringing us the Marble Sports Worldwide News. And remember, that's what it is. We have it. We don't name it that very often, but it is the Marble Sports Worldwide News. We're talking. We're talking Marble Sports at a large scale. <gasps> so be aware of that. Okay. Uh, okay. That's that's the little uh, tidbit of information. The did you know marbles uh, for the for the episode today, um, mm. but. We have more important things than that. Um, Waff is here. You know him. But who you may not know is Focaf. Um, that's how we have to pronounce his name because of the joke. Uh, runs into territory of words we do not like to use often on the show. But welcome, Focaf. <laughs> it's good to be back, guys. Yeah, and you... It's great to have you back. You have not been on the show. Now, he did come on the show once before, so we're not going to ask him how did you get on, into Marvel Sports. He can talk about it if he wants, but we're not going to like do the thing where me and Waff very badly sync up the question. Um, because he came on once before. Um, before we say the episode, if you, if you remember, uh, do a little comment right now, um, if, you, if you know the, the Marvel Sports Worldwide trivia. Um, so I'll give you a second to do that. Three, two, one, second, go. All right, so he was on back in episode 15. That is 70 episodes ago. That is more than a year ago by weeks. 80. 80. Right. 80. <laughs> 80. I don't know. I can't do math. Don't even Don't even start with me, my man. Uh, 80, 70. That's a lot of time. That's almost two years um, since we've had him on. So to finally have him back on is a lot of fun. And I remember 15, even to this day, being a really exciting and informative episode regarding Marvel Sports. So it's great to have him back on. Um, Folk, do you anything you want to just say in general? Because I know you just came off leaving the JMRC and a lot of stuff. Is there anything you just want to let the uh, the uh, listeners know before we get into the mailbag? Um, I'm open for commissions. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely I don't have much to say. I'll just follow the flow of conversation. One thing I want to get to sometime in this episode is just talking about the value of JMRC and I think directions for the channel going to the future despite the new model going forward yeah i would definitely love to uh discuss that and hear your opinion on that and actually um a lot of our emails do address that specific topic so we might just flow into that through the emails <laughs> so to get going here first email and remember with some of these emails were supposed to be read last week and we didn't because the last week's show was crazy and ridiculous so so mm -hmm. these some of these emails are old, but still important. So here we go. Matthew O'Hara, thank you for writing in. Uh, subjected Hornets and Jawbreakers writes in, Hello, what are your guys' thoughts on the Hornets and Jawbreakers retiring and the Gliding Glaciers coming back into the league? All right. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, I, lo I love the Gliding Glaciers. I do. I think they're, they're my favorite terrible team in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the Gels Marble Runs world. They are. They, they're bad because they... That they're just not good, but they're a very awesome team. I love their name. I love the, the vibe of the team. Um, honestly, I mean, this question is harder to give a marble-focused opinion on because we know the reason that the Hornets and the jaw, or at least for the Jawbreakers retiring, was 
steeped in Dion's, you know, weird decision and he didn't listen to the community and he just went ahead and did what he thought was right. So it's hard to give you an opinion where I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk about whether I like the jawbreakers or not. When I'm more thinking about, well, Dion made a decision without really checking with anybody else um, as we talked about last week. So um, on that, I'm just kind of, it's hard for me to really say much besides that. But I'm, I'm a big Gliding Glaciers fan and I'm excited to see them back. Uh, I do actually kind of kind of remind you, like, 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 like they did say, like, at least from my, my conversations with the, the JMRC, like, they, they were plans, like, they were discussing, like, who to replace who. It's just that Dion made the announcement without telling anybody. But the, the plans were still there to actually have them um, be replaced, but like not retire, just like go, right. at, like, to take a break, basically. So like, this was always going to happen. It's just that it was kind of announced ahead of time. Uh, but right. like for me, uh, the Hornets. Uh, I've never been a big fan of the Hornets. Me I know neither. that the, uh, the community has never been like a bi- I guess the biggest fan of uh, like the Hornets in, in general from what I've seen. So like I imagine not too many people are upset by it, but like it is kind of weird. Like this was a fan like voted team. It hasn't been here very long, and it's right. already getting booted out. Like like wait, hold, didn't they, how did they do in uh, Showdown? Actually, didn't they? Uh, second. Second. And, uh, well, they did all right in Showdown, but I mean, remember, Showdown, all you have to really do is beat, like, the Limers, so that's not saying much. Um, in truth, the Hornets are a terrible team. They're they're one of one of the worst Marble League teams um, that I've seen. They've been terrible in Marble League 1. They're really not um, a... They're not compa- comparable to most of the, the consistently performing um, JMR teams, even, you know, lower ones like the Pinkies or the Oceanics. Um, for that one year, but that that doesn't mean they deserve to be booted so early. Remember that you know, like you said, fan team, and that guy went through all the work to get a logo, to build fan support, to win the vote, and and he's actually more active in the community than the Turtle Sliders guy. And then so just to boot the Hornets just because. Um, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the decision was, but it seems to me like the like DN probably like okay, Hornets, Bumblebees, same thing, boom, let's put them together. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Vocab, what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, you cover all the main points, right? I think the Phantom contest is kind. Of, I think on one hand, in like generally, I think it's good to swap out some teams from time to time in ML because I think the idea of like the mystery of a new team keeps people intrigued and maybe get some new fans. But obviously, if you throw it out a team, people are going to be upset, um, especially with a community team where it's like someone like the Hornets founder feels like he has a stake in the direction of a team which might not be so easily you know planned out um so it's a, it's i think i respect the decision i think it would be fun i really do love the gliding glaciers i think the theming is going to be really cool and um the best thing we can hope for is that one of those new teams um qualify and then shock the world gain some new fans it'll be fun uh, shock get it because yep. shock is the competitor in, in the marble <laughs> right and stop. In, to name. Uh, it would be when, it would when be he, cool like, to see the Glen Glaciers like just like actually like get a podium, you know, like like just out of nowhere, like suddenly they're just like really good. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, the Minty's arc in ML twenty obviously yes. kept the people invested. Man, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't like the Mini Maniacs at all. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know if you know that folk half, but like, there's been many episode where I've just I've just expressed my distaste for that team. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, st- no comment. I, no I comment. still think it's cool to see uh, a, an unexpected team be so high up in the Marble League. Like, I had to give respect to the Mini Maniacs, to being so good in Marble League 2020. Do I think they're going to be – I've talked about this before. Do I think they're going to be good in 2021? Absolutely not. I think they're going to do bad. I do think they're going to do bad. I do. But, um, um, yeah, you're right. It's going to see new teams. And if the Gliding Glaciers shock the world – I mean, shock, get it? Because the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt players. Stop. Do we get it? And um, then I'll be, I'll be really excited. And Waff does not like that pun. Um, next email. So this is subjected Bobo B. Uh, sounds like uh, Marble League team names, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, by Alex is cool. Um, M&H Racing was fun, but now it's not. He tries to advertise himself too much and copies gel and clickbaits. More on that later. Well, thank you, Alex. Right. I agree with that. I do not like MNH like at all, but um, there you go. Um, Focaf, do you know about MNH? No comment. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Okay, so um, we got a long email coming here. Let's go. So we have Days of Implosion subjected, um, wrote in by Edu GJ. He writes in here and there. So here we go. 
about the entry changes first. For the first time, one of the 16 originals is saying goodbye. This isn't surprising as Drawbreakers was in the basement for years. That's true. Ranked 28 to 28 for me. Hornet's gone. Now that's something I didn't see coming, but it's another premature retirement to the count. In your opinion, because you were there, can this be seen as the channel admitting that the fan team contest was a failure? Now that's a good question. We'll come back to it at the end of the email. Hmm. Now the big one. We could see that things weren't going smoothly, but this, the committee ceasing its activities is a huge negative to everybody, mainly because the bridge between channel and spectators is lost, but also every other aspect like scheduling, graphics, analysis, etc. Well, things that make JMR stand out is under a big question mark right now. The lore is paused during the development of its most exciting updates ever, in my opinion, in collaboration with selected community members. We don't know if these will come out anymore. And apparently all this mayhem could be avoided if someone in the headquarters didn't try to manage the channel in an authority authoritarian way, interfering in some important decisions and behaving badly in social media. It's a series of events that continued unresolved concerns which led to this delicate point. I think the members of the now extinct committee for all the effort they put into the videos and for everything surrounding them to make this experience enjoyable for all of us. But how will the content look it like in the future? Only time will tell. It's important to say that the community didn't quit and is still looking forward for future series. And I really think we should wait for these developments. What an email. Edu, I got to say, I always love how you write your emails. They're very um, straightforward. They're very well written and they're very poignant. So thank you. Um, a lot of good questions yeah. in there. I mean, I, I think let's start with the, the smaller one. Um, does the Hornets being removed, seen as uh, seeing the fan team contest as a failure? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I it's, it's hard for, like, it, I mean, for me, like, like I think it's, it was a great opportunity, you know, to get like uh, some additional involvement from the fandom and stuff like that. And I think, I don't think that was a bad idea at all, but like they haven't been doing very well. So it's hard to, I guess, get invested in them. But it's not like they could control that. Like it's just it's the marbles. It's just how they roll. Right. They, they, this, they, just, they, what, they didn't got a bad, dealt a bad hand, and there's something you can do. Uh, I, I mean, like, I guess in terms of the community thing, like uh, I know that the creator, the, the you know, the Turtle Cyrus hasn't really been involved much, and I mean, I can't say I have no personal like experience or understanding of anything. But I've heard that apparently people have had uh, not the best experiences with the Hornets creator, and that's kind of led some people to not be very big fans of the team itself. But I, again, like I have not seen anything that of my own. Oh, that's just all I've heard. So like, I don't know. Like I, I don't. I can't really say if it's a failure or not. I think it's just like, I, I, honestly, I, I, it's hard to say anything about it. At least for me, like, I don't. Like I think it's it just needs more time to 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 flesh it out. Like give them more time to actually compete. Okay. Uh, yeah, I kind of made a remark earlier about uh, kind of offhand remark that. If you're a creator of a fan team, you get in, then you feel like you have a stake in their success. Um, and I, I guess I have to expound. I don't know how to expound that apart from just saying that. I mean, I think it's true. Like, I think the Hornets creator thought, okay, well, I'm working so hard for the commit, working so hard to make this team. My team's made the big leagues. You know, I have a stake in this now. I am so invested in JMR. Um, whether that's been communicated properly, I'm not sure. And I think that's just kind of a risk you have. It's like, Yella has said, actually, that he wants to do a fan team tournament in, like, one YouTube comment. Mm, that would be... But cool. let, let, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Not like a tournament, like a... Come on, man. X-Camel? No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. This is out of control. <laughs> I mean, like, he wants to, like, a race with, like, fan marbles. That would be cool. You know, like, one... Like, a bit more kind of a low-key version where it's, like, maybe the fans put in the names, like, the old days oh, and put it back uh, in. That would be fun. And that might be a bit more get away. Like, it's like... It's not saying, oh, here's a fan team... And your team could win the Marble League, could get all the glory, because then that sets expectations right. about like how like fancy the team must be. Um, yeah, I yeah, think definitely. this whole That's idea. Yeah, there's a whole idea of maybe we can do more like you know kind of fan service in the future, but start from start start low, see what it's like as a one-off thing. Maybe that would be less stressful, not feel like people are too attached to those teams. No, I. Uh, Edu I agree that, even yeah. said something about. Yeah, I mean, like, there are other channels out there who do, like, um, teams based off of, like, uh, like, like major dedicated fan submissions. Right. Mm. So that that might be, but I don't follow too many cha other channels too closely. I mean, yeah, the Racing Marble League 
is kind of that's their well that's the way they're getting their feet wet in marble sports like i said i i have been talking you know i work i work with the guys so we're hoping i'm hoping we're hoping we're throwing rolling around ideas hop through did there with the rolling come on um i'm we're rolling around ideas for possibly um uh, doing like some sort of marble league with more formal teams obviously wouldn't call it marble league or copy that wouldn't be that but we would like do something in a similar style with teams um, but the way you got to start was that fan team thing. Um, you can actually, they actually pay now to submit their marble and their name and their logo. They name it whatever we want, whatever they want. I made a couple small changes because some of the names were a little bit too much for me. But um, uh, most of them were, 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 were fine. And, and, and there, you could see that they're fan named. And, and I think that's, I, uh, I think that's, that's good for, um, like, that, that is a distinct difference. If Jell uh, or Yella does, um, a fan team thing where it's like okay this is a lower level thing this is not marble league as opposed to actually submitting a team in a marble league where there's a lot of expectations when you submit a new team in a marble league because you know the marbles need to have a distinct look they need to have a distinct name where it's a catchy name in some level like, if it's just an awful name i mean like then, then fans are just going to hate it um at that higher level a lot of expectations with that it needs to have a good logo a decent design so you have it kind of it kind of takes on a new level if you get it into marble league um so that that's a good point to note. Um, I think that's kind of mm -hmm. what I mean. That seems what kind of what you were saying in some respect. Um, mm -hmm. But um, as far as the uh, crap, I just totally lost it. Um, what was what was you just were talking? What was the topic we discussed just before what we did now? Um, just completely lost the 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 mind thing. Like in the email. Oh my god, no, I just complete. I had like a big thing that I wanted to really mention, and then I just, it's just gone now. It's just it rolled away, it rolled away, it rolled away with uh, the Savage Beaters' chances of winning race 11. Um, and the Green Ducks' chances of winning the uh, championship. Um, man, it's gone now. Uh, yeah. Alright, let's go back to the email. Like, <laughs> back uh, to the email. So, um, yeah. I guess, I guess this is a good time for you to discuss, because I know you wanted to talk about this, because um, I do very helpfully brings it up. Um, what what are you looking for? What what are you looking towards? Like as far as what the content will look like in the future, he says only time will tell. Um, but uh, what do you think, Focap? And I know with that you also want to discuss. I, I, I like, mean, the like, team. look, a part of the deal I had with Yella is that I want to finish a job I started, which was I kind of contributed some of the graphics editing for M1S2. Right. After that, I'm just going to go back to where it was and just you know like stare at the videos as they're uploaded and everything. Yeah, um, and yeah uh, one thing I could say is that I'm not going to reveal any of the ML 2021 events, but that was something, one of the last projects I think there was a good communication on between Yella and JMRC, or even JMR, JMRC. Um, and I think the events are going to be good. I think I'm really excited about the events. I think there's a lot of creativity That's there. That's good. I like that. Yeah, and, and and I think someone it, it was not Edu who said this, but that ML twenty twenty one is going to be a test for the channel's like long term prospects. And the one thing I said is that like Yellow would love to make it look pretty, uh, for sure. But you can make it super pretty if and if people would stop watching if the events are uncreative or like, yeah, the rules are confusing and unexplained, and yep. you know the hype is not there. So I've worked, I've, I've talked to some of the new people that um, Yellow worked with, like he works with the new editor, Carr, is a great guy, honestly. Um, so I feel secure about the production side of things, honestly. It's just the whole part of making sure the rules are settled, the hype is there. Because otherwise, I mean, it sucks. I think a lot, apart from a lot of us hardcore fans, a lot of people think of Marvels as a big joke. Mm. Um, Somehow, I and don't know how. there's always yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like it really take you really have to you know really evolve as a community and change your mindset to really start taking this as seriously. And not all JMR subs are going to ever take it that seriously, but I would. I've always felt like the channel benefits from from ha spotlighting those people who can you know really take it to the next level. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's the extra stuff that t is around the channel, even after you watch, finish watching the videos. Well, that's a problem now, because that's not as it, yeah. much there anymore. And that that's one of the biggest things that that we dis we discussed. Um, probably came out more in when I, me and Waf, uh, talked before the show 
uh, when the JMRC announced their breakup, um, <laughs> this made it sound like a relationship. Um, then uh, it kind of is though. But like when we talk about it that day, bef- uh, instead of in the episode itself, we're like that whole other part of JMR that occurs in the Discord, that occurs in the Reddit, that occurs behind the scenes between the members of the of, of the Marvel Sports community. They're super serious about about moving forward this whole train of, of Marvel Sports because this is still new. We're still at the beginning of this. Anybody's idea is new and fresh and and and, and useful, and so we're and like all of that is gone when with the end of JMRC and the that broken like that broken bridge of communication between JMR and its community um uh, as, as DM seems to be breaking that down so that that's a huge blow to the serious Marble Sports community most subs to the channel who mm. watch weekly but aren't in the discord or just post memes on the reddit um don't won't really feel the effect of this unless the content declines and we'll, we'll talk about that later um because mm. they there's they're not involved in that they're not involved in that extra inside stuff but the people that yeah. are really into it and by the way those people that are really serious about it and contribute in the off time are the people that keep jmr so fresh so creative such a much more notable and better community than something like fubic or an M- or mnh the, um and those are those people so removing that ability is a huge blow to JMR, and that's why I'm personally really upset and worried about the future of JMR because that was the mm. extra aspect of JMR that made it so much better than all the other channels. That that if you are serious about Marble Sports, you on some level have a chance to really contribute to the um, to the forward motion, the forward progress of the channel. Yeah, uh, Brendan, could you could you give me like a, maybe a minute to kind of go up, play off of that yeah, go ahead. with my little spiel? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I always thought. I have a, like a mental framework where it's like there's three ways of watching JMR. You know, there's the solitary version where it's like it's 3 a.m. where you are and the YouTube recommends hole got you down this rabbit hole and you're binging the videos. There's watching with your friends, which is like you pick a few friends to stream it. You guys all pick a team and then you guys kind of play off each other. And then there's watching it as a community where it's like you're so invested not just watching the videos but joining in a discussion afterwards where you're probably talking to like dozens or hundreds of people trying to start arguments share ideas whatever right and even from a business perspective i think it's important to recognize these differences because you might binge all that stuff at 3 a.m and 4 a.m on a saturday night and then you forget about it you move on to, you know, I don't know, like uh, treadmill diecast racing or something. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no, I, I no, love that. that. No, it went, it no. went viral, right? It went viral on, this, on Reddit. <laughs> I've seen that. Um, I've seen that. Someone actually sent that to me because, um, like, okay, so my college friends, they know um, I do, like, commentary stuff. So someone sent that to me, like, oh, this, this should be your next gig. I was like, I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't drop down that far. <laughs> uh, anyway, continue. No, no, I, that's mostly it, right? It's just, like, the more that you the more that you are thinking about this stuff outside of just watching the videos and just taking it in the less disposable it becomes right. uh, i want to give a shout out to uh 3d bot maker oh, i know yes. there are yeah that's like one of the biggest uh die cast uh um hot wheels racing communities right. um let i would say this once and i think i think it's done i think that the guy that runs that channel has a much healthier attitude towards incorporating community feedback than JMR does. Um, why do I say that? It's because, you know, he, you know, there's a forum on Facebook where all the fan, hardcore fans are there and they're listening to ideas and talking to ideas and they're creating narratives out of like the different uh, cards that repeat again and again. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, it's really cool to see, but it also shows that like the creator is giving some space for the passionate fans to tell them what's great. Yeah. And that gives a sense of continuity to the channel the way that I think JMR may not be if they're viewing it as, oh, let's just think of, let's just, let's just apply this great idea that we thought about from Yella, from Dion, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's gotta be more of a two-way street. I think the channel benefits the fans stay if they work that way. I think it's not, this is not the last time I'll talk about this, but it's definitely the first time I'm starting to talk about it. So maybe you'll see me ranting on the subreddit about no, I, yeah. this kind of like two-way community feedback uh, more. 
Yeah, uh, something that, like, I, I'll bring attention to is, like, Eju mentioned, like, the whole lore thing, and, like, uh, well, it's, uh, on the, like, the blog, like, it, the, all the lore that, like, Stint and, like, the rest of the community worked on to, like, that, that was, like, official at one point is now just expanded universe, and so it's not actually official anymore, mm. which, so, like, basically, all of that's yeah. just kind of been thrown away now. It's like the Disney Star Wars yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, they retconned the whole expanded universe. Yeah, like, it's, now, it's Legends now, and it's, like... Yeah. So, so Legends is Legends is a little bit like for those star okay, so I watch those Star Wars lore and like discussion channels where you know they the, the name of their video is Yoda's really not really that powerful or something like that and then you watch it and they, they it's like some weird Star Wars legend story. But the Star Wars legend stuff is really kind of uh um it really is worked in. Like the general Star Wars community, like the really serious Star Wars community considers that almost as much canon as the regular stuff at this point because it's so like it's so important to the development of character so it's like i feel like in a sense that's what will happen if we if this stays expanded universe people who are serious about marvel sports are as a community as a as a as a group of all the people involved in in looking at the expanded universe going to consider it just it just just canon as a community because that's the only thing that's really going to give any extra development or real character development to any of the teams coaches marbles etc Mm. Fair, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but anyway, um, by the way, uh, before we move on uh, to the next email, Focaf, dude, that was spot on. That was spot on. Those are those are like the things that 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 I've tried to say, but I didn't say them as as good because I guess I didn't think it through as much. But what you said there, what you said, what you broke down the different ways people watch JMR, that's spot freaking on. And um, I was talking about this too with Waf. I was talking about the business side and and when how the way I said it was more like. Okay, well, as a business person, you should recognize how important that connection between the JMRC and the and the inner community is when cre- when moving forward with the channel. Like how uh, hearing that voice and those community members feeling like they can make a change in the channel that is actually going to make uh, for a better profit, a, a higher uh, amount of success in the end. But the way you phrased it was even better, I think, to really be like, "That's a new way. That's a new. Um, that is." When you're like a part of that inner community, that is a that is a different way to uh, receive the content of JMR, and that's different from the way where you watch it with your friends, which I've done before, and that's different from the way where you binge it at three three a.m., which I've also done before. I, I kind of went through all three stages from uh, 2016 till now, but um, the, like all of that is, th- those are different ways of watching. And as someone who is a CEO of a company or the CEO of a channel, whoever you want to call it. A good CEO, a good businessman will recognize all the different ways that people who watch your content receive your content. And if you are mm. smart, you recognize all those different ways and set up the forward progress of the channel to reflect being able to accommodate all the different possible ways that that content is received. And so that, in that, my opinion, that, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the MVP point of the episode. Do we got, we got to play some confetti or whatever confetti mm-hmm. um confetti because that 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 really is um that's extremely important to think about and that just that just makes me like it just drives me nuts to think about someone like dion who like while he's made a lot of yeah. not good decisions he's not a dumb person so like how could you not see that how could you not see right. that? um um my uh one last thing i'll say and, and i'm done uh jmr merch I have actually have JMR merch. Me too. And I'm the kind of person that thinks that like buying merch for like internet channels is like the most like cringe thing in the world. Um, that's an example of kind of a like what does that mean? Like you know, you have, you have you're attached to your teams and you buy merch it, and it generates serious cash flow for the, for the channel. Right. Mm-hmm. And I I was never involved in business. That's that was never the role of any JMRC member. Um, but you know, if I had a chance to tell Yella, I mean, I would say that it's just that, and ex- merge an example of what it, of what's why people are so devoted to your channel, whether other channels are not. And I wish that the biz, if you're talking about business, trying to sell the channel to others, if you're looking for sponsors, that could be a part of the message. Yeah, mm. yeah, and that's something that like yeah. like I'm the same way. I don't I don't buy merch from channels. I love certain channels. I love Dashy Games or Dashy XP or whatever you call his channel. He is the funniest freaking guy on YouTube. Okay, he just is. But I have never bought merch from him, and I probably never will. All right, but JMR, 
I'm I'm wearing merch right now. All right, come on, crazy cat size, come on, red eye, come on, red eye. Um, by the way, by the way, quick uh, quick tangential aside, um, I was very firm in saying that Yellow Eye was going to be the best overall racer, and Waff said that Red Eye would, and I have to say, Waff, you're going to be correct with that. So uh, congratulations, mm -hmm. Waff, on being correct on that. Um, uh, again, Waff, the Marble Sports connoisseur. But uh, yeah, I'm wearing Crazy Cat's Eyes merch. I got Mellow Yellow merch. I got Lima's merch. I mean, that, that that's not worth as much, but I still have it. Um, so I mean, like, yeah, this is the only channel, the only YouTube channel, the only really thing that I've bought merch for that, like, like it was, you know, that I connected with so much that I was like, I, I gotta wear, I gotta wear their channel on my body. I, that, that, that's what you're saying. When you buy merch, you're saying, I want to put your channel on my body. That's what you're doing. So when you get that deep into it, um, as weird as that may sound, um, it is, then you're really committed to the channel. There's a lot of people who bought merch. There's a lot of people who don't usually buy merch for things who bought merch for JMR. And, um, man, it's just, it's just, it's just a shame to see where it's going now. Next email though. We got to move on. Random questions. Yay. Wrote in by James Gator. Um, editor for my YouTube, by the way. Thanks, James. Here we go. So he says, hello, it's me, Toady. Uh, he goes by Toady. Uh, I feel weird because I haven't emailed in yet, but I get to ask questions in the live chat sometimes, so yeah. I just had some questions that I wanted to hear your opinions on, which is the point of this email, evidently. Uh, uh, plug email in at mswpodcast at gmail.com. That's right. Thanks, James, for putting that in the email. You should email in mswpodcast gmail.com. You can say things, then we will say the things that you said in the email, and then we will react in likeness to the things that were said in the email that we then said. Um, that's how it goes. So here we go. Here we go. Here's the questions. And I guess these are, some of these are directed at a single person, so we'll tell you. So the first question, if you guys have been thinking about this, have you thought of any viable replacements for the JMRC that would possibly keep the quality of JMR safe? Ooh, what a heavy question. Um, I'm going to defer uh, to WAP on that. So I, I personally don't have anyone in mind. Like, I definitely know that, like, I, like, there are definitely people who are capable enough of like doing the same job it's just that like they're going to be dealing with dion as well and so it's like i feel like it's just going to be a cycle where a bunch of talented and dedicated fans are coming in ready to help make jmr better then they find out oh that's why the previous jmrc left and then they're like okay i think we're gonna leave too and then like okay well new one's like okay well we're gonna do better and it's like, oh wait now i see this and then they're going to go out and a new one's gonna come in and it's like it's just gonna be a cycle i feel like yeah, how it seems in this case, um, unfortunately, and this is really unfortunate, is that it's kind of like, uh, you know, if, it's kind of like if there was like a, like a house fire every week and you just continue to put out the fires, you continue every week to put out the fires, but, but that doesn't do anything in the end because the source of the fires is never dealt with. And it just continues to happen on and on. You can never really resolve the problem, but you resolve the problem temporarily. That's kind of the same thing um, here. Dion's really the problem. His mindset in, in regards to the channel, what the channel is to him, how the channel should be run is the problem, not the people that were in the first JMRC, not the people that will be in the second JMRC, not the people that might be in the 75th JMRC in 3,100. I mean, well, I guess... I guess Never mind. Um, but, but I mean, like, uh, you know, like it, it's about it's about the mindset of the of the I guess the current CEO of JMR, um, and you have to deal with that source of the fires first um, before putting them out anymore, um, or you know, makes any sense. So uh, that's what I would say to that. Focap, I don't know if you have anything on that you want to say. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I'll keep it brief. I just it's tough because I think. The JMRC model was always, it was not the most sustainable thing in the world, you know? Um, a big part of that is that there were there were certain, you know, production side users you were supposed to manage, like um, you know, event checking and so forth. But it's just, it's just, um, a lot of people don't realize that the JMR videos are still made on very tight deadlines. Um, M1S2 looks great. I mean, it will look great, it'll be a great record, but oh my God, I mean, there's a reason why an actual F1 race has like hundreds of crew mm. at the race and it's cost millions of dollars to produce graphics. Um, we, we, we got something close for sure, but it's just, it, it's a lot of work. Um, I've done my part at least like because I've done a little bit of this like actual like, you know, um, 
uh, bread and butter stuff like the graphics i've done my part in documenting some of this so i'm pretty confident in the kind of people who will read the documentation and uh, work on use the same workflow i have um like i said I, sorry i'm talking more of the production side but it's, it's like on one hand the production side of jmrc was done under super tight deadlines and it was kind of demotivating to you know to not feel like you're knowing when you're supposed to be doing work um, and on the other hand the community boost side is like we don't really know what Dion is thinking and uh, Dion is apparently creative director slash CEO slash big poobah slash whatever like you know it's it's just like it's hard to understand what's going on right and I would really like you know I would hope that with JMR becomes they have the bigger crew like um, there's cars the editor there's Tim the social media that they have an actual workflow for doing this and not a more like oh if Yella and Dion likes your idea we'll use it like that's not that's not consultation that's just you know like you're hearing pitches um, and I think the channel really would help from having a more kind of structured process where just like what Mel did with the teams at the events where it's like let's get the feedback from the patrons right let's get the feedback this way and that way let's summarize it up let's report back to yellow and the yellow's like okay yeah I got it let's not do this then rather than this whole like you know everybody's fighting for themselves trying to suggest ideas to yellow because sometimes that might work but if you're like actually running a company where you're actually managing people and delegating people, you have to like not be so hands-on. And I think part of Dion, I don't even want to say anything about Dion, but it's just, he clearly thinks he's capable of doing more things than he actually can. He doesn't have the time in his life to do all the things, all the community outreach that JMR fans could expect and honestly should expect. Yeah, yeah, that's probably part of it too. I definitely agree. Um, and he needs to be more able to give a job to someone else and then really just let that person do it right and not and not feel like he needs to also be involved yeah. and like be like okay i'm gonna let you do this but i'm also gonna kind of do it with you i mean you know i, I that makes sense mm-hmm. uh moving on with the questions um to brendan so this one's for me oh my name's brendan did you know that ricochet ricochet chat all right um if you could get rid of one team besides the mini maniacs thank you for putting that little ad end in there which would it be and why um Besides the Mini Maniacs, well, I mean, you're really taking a big one out there because, uh, as you guys might know, I don't like the Mini Maniacs, like, at all. Um, but besides them, what would I get rid of? Uh, um, I mean, do I really dislike any other team? Like, that, that, would, be the, that would be the question. Um, I mean, the Hornets would have been the other team, honestly. I, I guess... I guess they're already gone, so that's kind of like a cop-out answer. But I, I didn't really like the Hornets either, not because I didn't like the team, uh, not because I lost the fan team competition, the Hornets, not because of that. Because I just don't, they're not a very good team. They're, they're really, really, they don't really belong in JMR because they pretty much get last place. They're like a, they're worse than the Limers. Um, and they're less veteran than the Limers. But, like, another team besides that, I mean, it's hard because even some of the bad teams like Cobalts and Rojo Rollers and... Uh, jawbreakers like I, I like them in their own weird little bad way so to think of another team that i'm like i don't really don't want to see them anymore i mean i i don't even hate the bumblebees which is weird because they're also another hubalino team and i find the bumblebees like super awesome and you know buzzy buzzy bumblebees i, I like them uh and the stream just stopped working but that's okay we'll keep going um i mean this is uh no it's back i don't know i would say hornet's and honestly, I'd have to really look and think more. Oh, Indigo Stars. Indigo, screw the, I hate the Indigo Stars. Get rid of them. All right, so there's the, there's the answer. I, I couldn't think of them for a while, but th- get rid of the Indigo Stars. They're, they're a useless team. Besides them or the Hornets or the Mini Maniacs, every other team can roll. Um, can, I, can, 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 I, can I say a, re, a repost to that? Sure. Can I counter that? Sure. <laughs> um, Indigo Stars, not a super popular team, and yet... On the subreddit the past few days, there's been very one very fanatic Indigo Stars supporter okay. making memes about Indigo Stars and shout out Indigo Stars. And <laughs> then all the other Indigo Stars fans came up and it's like, yeah, we exist. All right. Um, oh, wait, listen. 
Yeah, That's a good year. so I, I hate I hate this style of question because it's like once you find a really committed like fan the fan base of people who really support a team, you can't hate that team. I'm sorry. I think it's just a matter of sometimes the objective is not you hate them. It's just they haven't been doing so much. And it's time for some new blood. Yeah. But you can't say you hate most teams. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I've talked about this before. Um, I think when I first talked about how I don't like the Mini Maniacs. When I hate a team, like, like cause, um, you know, I say I hate the Mini Maniacs. I say I hate the Indigo Stars or whatever. I, don't, I hate the team in the sense it's like, it's kind of like um, you ever talk to someone who's like a baseball fan and they're like, oh, I hate the Yankees. But it's not like I wish the Yankees stopped being a team and never play baseball again. No, it's just like I'm as a sports fan, right? Having that extra sports, putting that extra passion into it where I not only love teams. By the way, I'm a Limers fan. So if you want to talk about loving teams that suck at rolling, I, I'm a Limers fan. Come on. Um, but... Um, like it's more it's more to just have that extra passion of like okay i'm gonna love these teams and i'm gonna hate these teams and the mini maniacs indigo stars give me a little bit more reason to hate than like the savage beaters because i think the indigo stars are kind of a lackluster team and i think the mini maniacs i kind of i'm just i i made a lot of predictions about them being bad and they ended up doing good so now i have a reason just kind of have this like anti-relationship with them but like like if I see like fans of Indigo Stars or fans of um of in, of Mini Maniacs like on Reddit being like yeah memes or whatever or we're all fans and we love them like I like to see that and I'm not gonna tell them oh you guys suck because I don't like your team no I'm gonna be like yeah you guys like you guys like your team and I like my teams and that's why JMR is so awesome because there's a big community around every single team. There you go, two off. Have we discussed your least favorite teams before? I don't remember. We all know Brennan is significantly more vocal. Yes. Yeah, so, Waf, uh, what are your least favorite teams, I guess? Honestly, like, I, I, I just want to preface that I don't really hate any team. I, 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 I don't think, like, there's any team I necessarily dislike. Like, How diplomatic least you? favorite. Like, part of me wants to say Jungle Jumpers just because they're so disappointing. Because, like, they're, like, that's, like, my, <laughs> I love that shade of green. Like, that, like, that should be, like, my favorite team. But they underperform so often that I felt like, 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 it's like I really wanted to like you. I so wanted to like you, but then like you just kept messing up over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, um, that love hate relationship. You know, I like I love how you guys look, but you guys you guys suck. Um, actually, actually, Focaf. I, I mean, you may have an answer to this because you're JMRC and unbiased. But do you have a team that like you may not hate them, but you don't like them as much as the other ones? Limers. Oh come on. Come on, stop yeah. well, I, 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 I'm not shy about being a Raspberry Racers fan. Okay, oh, yeah. I guess I should have said that. I, I should have said that. Like, I created the Limers Trash emote. Yeah. I, I, I think that should be my go-to answer. Oh, yeah, you didn't even say Limers. What's wrong with you? Cre- you forced that emote upon the server. Granted, they yeah. do suck, so I'm fine Not with just the emote. server, but the entirety of, of, of oh, yeah, every the Marvel Discord. Discord. Yeah, oh, my God. But, like, guys, listen. Lim- the day of the Limers is not yet. But the day of the Limers is coming. You One day, you're going to wake up, you're going to click on Black Hole Funnel 7, and the Limers are just going to tear it up. And by, by the way, now, let's stop for a second. There, please tell me, Focaf, that for Marble League 2021, that there's no anything near, like, Black Hole Funnel. Please. I, I cannot say anything like that, but it would be weird, right? Black Hole Funnel was kind of like a space Right, but they thing. might have done like Meow Funnel or, or something like that, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that, that seems kind of contrived to me. Let's just leave it at that. Just, just so I can say this to a JMRC member, Black Hole Funnel, and I said this when it came out, Black Hole Funnel is by far the worst event ever in JMR history. And then, again, it's the worst event. And the third time, it is the shittiest worst event ever in JMR okay. history. Okay, so. all right. Okay, okay. You know what? You know what? You know what? Uh, let me. S- I actually have an angle relevant to this, um, because th- it's g- this is going to be a little heavier all of a sudden. But let me just say that I was one of a few JMRC members who recommended the two-run structure for Black Hole Funnel. What do you mean by the two-run um, structure? Like the way it was like all the teams did one run, two two people in, and then they you know switched sides and then they run it again. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, so I was like, because Yellow wanted to do the Space Team event, but it's like all of a sudden we got to come up with rules and stuff. So I was getting a little very nosy in that, trying to make up the best rules, the fairest rules. And yes, the final result, it was very hard to understand what was going on. 
um, and then you know I was on a sub, and then like hundreds of others trying to come in, like you know why wasn't it like this? Why wasn't this like a knockout tournament? Why wasn't it like knockout that? Why wasn't it like man. this? Why wasn't it something that like someone else even suggested? But I thought it wasn't fair, so let's not do it. Okay. So we shouldn't suggest the yellow. And um, probably the, the the shittiest I felt uh, during ML twenty twenty was after the black hole funnel. Mm, listen. Um, yeah. 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 It, it, like I get it. Like it's not anyone's fault. No, no, it's not. It's just these things happen when um, you know things are kind of decided on the spot, events are decided on the spot, and not planned well, like or yeah. consulted well in advance. And you're just trying to live with it. I don't take it personally anymore, but I I, I get where you're coming from. I, I really do. It's it's. I okay. I I feel a little bad that I brought it up because you were part of. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I but, just gotta um, get that on my system. But like, I feel like it's more when I say that. It's more in the sense that I don't like say that and then feel anger towards Yella or the JMRC for putting that event out there. It's more like, like I want. JMR, JMR is so creative in its events. It's so good with Marble League that, like, when I saw Black mm-hmm. Hole Final, it was like, like wow. If you remember when I made the Algodoo tournament, um, and then I put oh. out, I put out Roulette, and I was like, this is gonna be awesome. And then you sat there and you said to me, this is the worst thing I've ever watched. Like, remember I, that? I, I in the live chat, I literally said, this is the worst event in marble racing history that I've ever watched. It was, and I, I. I <laughs> <laughs> it was it, 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 that's what it reminded me of like the JMR version of uh, of roulette where I was like I was like I can understand why this idea seemed good at first and seemed good in practice and seemed good in thoughts and I'm and I'm not like angry at the people that made it it was just you know from my perspective um, uh, or at least from a viewer's perspective it was boring to watch compared to all the other events and I think that uh-huh. it was kind of like surfing where it wasn't fleshed out enough it was maybe it wasn't tested enough from a viewer's perspective, oh, to man. really I be see like surfing done better. Yeah, to see we be, be, be mm. like, okay, now I see the marbles more uh, being more mm-hmm. the star of this and less luck based. Yeah, but just to riff off what Waff said, you know, the great thing about a community that cares and hardcore fans is that yeah, people like casuals might just say, I don't understand surfing. Why can't it be done better? Right. And the actual hardcore fans would start talking about what does that mean for it to be better? Should we explain the rules better? Should the point system be allocated? Should there be editing? Um, and you know, what part of what I really hope Yellow understands going forward is that this is so valuable to get like high quality detailed advice, apart from just saying, I'm not a fan of this or this is boring. Mm. Uh, and you know, no disrespect to anybody who says that. But like you know, if that's what you're working with, that this event is boring or it's not interesting, then the impulse is just to throw it out rather than trying right. to Im- improve on it. Yeah. And I would like it, like it, it to, you know, always take at least some advice and consideration before scrapping it entirely. I love yeah, what you're what saying. That's what we've always tried to do on this show. Like, oh my like, god, that is the criticism. that you folk have. You're describing the show. Like that's those yes. words describe the show. We take every <laughs> every week, every week we take what JMR's done, yeah. and we're like, you know what? Do we like it? Let's rate it out of 10. And then we do that. And then after that, if we yeah. didn't like it, instead of being like, okay, never do that again, we first talk, I mean, listen, Black Hole Funnel, never do that again. But besides that, the first, <laughs> the first thing we always talk about, we did this for Black Hole Funnel too. Um, we talk about, instead of just hating it and moving on, how can we take this thing that we didn't like and make it better? What should change? Why should it change? What's the point of the event? What should be what should be what we're looking for in the event? And that and that has been like the sh- the, the point of the show, like the idea of the show. And and if it's yeah, and that, and that, that's why I love. I love you say that. It's the hardcore. Fan. I guess we're hardcore fans. Me and Waff at this point. Um, uh, yeah, I'd say I, we are. I, yeah, I, <laughs> at this point, I, 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 I have this distinction between casual and hardcore, which I won't get into detail. But that's what I mean. It's like one or the other for me. Yeah. So I mean. I mean, we're probably in the hardcore, and yeah, we so that, and that's what we do. We're like, we're like, well, there's no point. Yeah, like if we just say it's boring, and that's the, that's the. Sorry, I'm trying to say seven sentences at once, but my point is that's the, that's the beauty of an inner community, and that's why Dion walling that off is an, is even another reason it's bad because you're missing out on all these possible statements and insights that could actually make your channel better. If you actually read through and interacted with your inner community, you could hear a lot of ideas for events that didn't go so well and learn why and hear good improvements, and then even if you don't apply 
exactly what they said. You take all those ideas and you implement some of them and you actually make your channel better and more um, you know, desirable to watch because of that. So it all comes And I think that. the communication is important too, right? Like right. Um, I've, I've been on the sub, so I keep mentioning the sub because the sub was where I started out in the community. But like I've seen so many times where it's like people are just making a post like, oh my God, they use my idea. Oh my God, they use my art. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. that, it, that's nothing cool about the channel. You gotta sell that. You should sell that, you know, you're always open to using, taking suggestions. And I feel, I mean, I feel like the, I feel like the, the, the channel as it stands on YouTube and Twitter doesn't really sell that. And I'm going to keep saying this again and again, if you let, don't stop me, which is that I really believe in the vision of JMR where there's always the two-way communication, that the final product is a combination of Yellow's best, Yellow's best ideas, Dion's best ideas, whatever, but also the fans' best ideas. And it's not some kind of like, you know, great man story where it's like, Yellow is the genius. Dion is the genius. Oh, God, even worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, just... It, it can't be like that. That's what it comes down to me for you at the end. Yeah, and that was that's a big thing for me. That's a huge. I think the hugest possible thing for me with that that particular topic. I'm um, talking about you know um, you know one person being the mind and the genius behind a, behind an idea as opposed to a whole community of of, of differing ideas. Um, because I'm, I was I was often like that. I guess like a few years ago, like around X camo time and and stuff. I thought like. I thought I thought like that was it like oh like this is this is my beautiful idea and like that that I'm I'm the guy I, I got I got it like I know all the things um, but then like over time uh, last couple of years I've really come to to grow and realize how important how like how negative and you know uh, hurt hurt I guess hurt harmful to the idea the mindset is that like there is a genius or a one guy that's putting it all on that, that, that there's the one reason the only reason for the success of th this idea um, then like saying the, um, uh, you know that it's everybody or at least a, a large group of people that are all committing ideas to it that that make it good because even stuff that I've come up with on my own generally and like succeeded at normally it's not it doesn't come to an end without at least a, a little bit of help from somebody else or like some other people just looking at it and giving their opinions and then those opinions really driving how I um, how I um, have done uh, I've you know, finally produce the product in the end, and that's just that's so big um, to to be able to realize that that um, even an idea where like okay, yeah, Yella does most of the recording and the editing, or it's two guys who do help with the editing, or Dion does most of the nothing, but <laughs> but like it it's really like the existence of the community outside, where like ev even if Yella or Dion scroll through and see one idea on the Reddit that they like, that person who wrote that is now a part of JMR's success because that changes the mindset that Dion has or whoever when when implementing that into the coming um, events or whatever. So that's so important to have that mindset. But with that being said, James Gator has one final question for us in the emails. Pancakes versus waffles. Who wins? Waff, your turn. Pancakes. Fair. Fair. For me, it's very, very hard, but I would probably say pancakes too. Pocaf? Uh, yeah, I'm team pancake. All right, let's go. All right. Um, so we have a couple more emails. Uh, we're actually almost at an hour, but which I'm fine with because I mean we can always cover two races next week if we have to. Um, yeah, especially like, with Focaf on. Work, so emails be all we can do. Yeah, and we've some good discussions. So well, Focaf has been on that. fire, man. Like he he's a very you bring a very special um, angle to the episode. Um, uh, I really like having you on. That's what I'm saying. Um, anyway, yeah, probably not gonna be on very often because of the real life commitments. But that's totally, listen, uh, dude, it uh, makes your yeah. appearance ever the more special. We'll have you on in 80 more episodes. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah, here we go. Awesome. Um, Chicken Boy 507 writes in. That's how he wants me to call him. Um, and he evidently put the whole met the whole email is in the subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, the email is empty. His only his old this old thing he has to say is is in the subject. So here we go. He says also please call me Chicken Boy five oh seven. Do you think with the crazy cat size winning M one probably do you think that they should be at a higher st well not probably they they did. Do you think that they should well, be at a higher time. higher standard hosting the Marble Olympics this year? Also. One trivia question: What marble race on Yellow's Marble Runs has the most views? You can pick up to three. That's a good trivia question. Um, I'm gonna address the first thing first. 
Uh, my standard thumb is uh, definitely higher. Um, if they can win Marbula One Season Two, then I'm gonna I'm gonna expect them to not be lackluster for the first time ever in Marble League. They've been always decent at first, but then they trail off in Marble League. I want to see them come out strong in all racing events, all racing events, all racing events this year in Marble League 2021. I want to see them have some good appearances in non-racing events. This this is an extremely important season for the validity of the Crazy Cat Size, who have always been a decent veteran team, but if they want to try to rise, uh, come out a little bit more from the ashes and show that they're an even better team that, that we, then we once kind of put them, I always kind of put them in the second tier, but still solid. I mean, if they're going to try to rise out of that, they need to have a good season this coming uh, summer uh, Marble League 2021. Um, as far as the marble races with the most views, the one with Comet that trended on Twitter is definitely the highest one. Uh, and, and a couple of the earlier videos um, that are like Marble Rally are like the highest. And then always the first one of every season. So like the qualifiers for 2019 Marble League, 2020, uh, the first Marble One race, those always have the highest views. Um, to actually look at the numbers, I'd have to go, I'd have to go check. Uh, Waf, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, my standard for them is a little bit higher, but, like, ultimately, I, I do understand that, like, skills in Marble 1 and, and, uh, and Marble League do not correlate really all that much, so, like, I'm not expecting them to do that much better. Fair enough. But, um, for top three views, uh, 2019 qualifiers, 2020 qualifiers, and maybe the, the, it was a bit easier if, if we didn't, if, like, the channel hadn't been deleted that one time. Uh... That comet video does make sense to me as well. Yeah, the the comet race. Yeah, that trended, trended for a, quite a while. Um, <clears throat> uh, I guess we'll just we'll just do the last email. Uh, finals race, um, by uh, Richard Hinckley. Thanks for writing in, Richard. One of the the mo the only mod I think still on our uh, our live stream. I'll add a couple more mods soon. You guys just wait patiently. Uh, one of you will get it. Um, I wonder who will be. I don't know. We'll uh, ricochet and find out. Um, that didn't even make sense. I know, off. That's why that didn't even make any sense. Um, but anyway, Richard Hinckley, uh, Hinckley says, in, it's the last race of tour, and three marbles can win the tour championship, A, B, and C. Okay, fair enough. Um, there are other marbles in the race, but they are too far behind in the standings to win. During the race, D is block D blocks B and C, not trying to win the race. Would you wonder if A paid off D to cause the interference? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I guess this is like a hypothetical. Oh, this is from his um, this channel, um, but like he's naming them maybe CD. Um, I think that when you are not a marble who can win, it is still in your competitive spirit to try to make it harder for other marbles to win, even when you know you can't win, or at least try to rise up the standings as much as possible, or take your frustration out on the better marbles. So I could see D just blocking, because he's like, you know what, you know what, you know what, C and B, just, just screw you, all right? I, I want to have a good race one of these times. I want to roll, all right? Come on, get out of the way. Come on, man. All right. But uh, uh, does anyone else want to react to that? I, I actually do, but could you repeat the situation again? I was a little confused. Okay, so there are, okay. Three marbles can win the tour championship. A, B, and this sounds like the the um sounds like a riddle. <laughs> sounds like a riddle. Mm -hmm. A, B, and C mm -hmm. can win the championship. There are other marbles in the race, but they can't win. During the race, marble D, so a marble who can't win, blocks B and C, um, and apparently D in that is not trying to win the race. He's just blocking B and C. Would you wonder mm -hmm. if A? Paid off D to cause the interference. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I understand now. Um, <laughs> the reason I wanted to point out on this is because J M Marcy was kind of occasionally we do uh, ref calls or crisis management, right. and this is a situation like that. Like you know, we've had lots of crisis situations. We had uh, the speedway stuff. We've had the Rangers choke. Like I remember modding the sub when the Rangers choke happened in ML twenty twenty. Total disaster. Oh my god. Um, um you know or like misty mountain and the thing is it's like that it's like you know sometimes these rare and abnormal things happen things you cannot have predicted and um if the channel if greg is not giving an explanation up front then people are gonna make this stuff up it's like you know like i hate this is gonna sound kind of um like broad and abstract but it's like people will make up like nasty motives for why it happened you know 
it's like the doping stuff, but just slightly more sophisticated, but not really. Um, and even after Missy Mountain, I was like, I went out, like, you know, I got my quiver into the sub. I was like, okay, look, 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 th th this race was a complete mess, but please let me explain. There were, there were rules, consistent rules followed here. And I did it on my own just because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a busybody. Um, but also because, I mean, I would not entertain that at all. I think marble sports should not entertain dumb theories like that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But knowing knowing that people are going to explain dumb theories, you have to be motivated to have a better explanation or kind of better characterization in advance. That's, I think, like a really soft quality of JMRC that was so important in making sure fans are happy and calm down. And I just, re I, I really, really, really hope other elements of JMRC do not try to, ex like, lean in on that for drama. That is oh, not going to go word. anywhere yeah. good. Yeah, and that becomes, and then it's just that. But I don't have any indication of that yet. I Yellow definitely would not want that 100%. No, um, I doubt it will happen, but I'm just saying that I don't think that would be a good idea. Right. Uh, I guess answer the like, I found the, uh, the answer for that, the most viewed videos. It is, the most viewed is the 2019 qualifiers with 12 million, 12 million views. Uh, the incredible marble run machine with 11,000 marbles at 5.1 million. Wow. And the big marble machine with a thousand marbles at 2.1 million. Damn. People like those marble machines. Well, those things get, like, shoved through the YouTube algorithm, I think, more often because they're shorter videos, yeah. too. So there's that. Um, and that kind of, like, appeals to more than just Marble Swords fans. It'll appear to those Domino fans and all those people. But um, anyways, so, yeah, that's uh, that, that we have hit. We have officially hit an hour of recording Marble Sports Talk without once actually talking about the stuff that actually happened in Marble Sports <laughs> last week. So that is that is something I think only me and Waf and uh, Focaf, thank you for coming on, could do. Um, <laughs> but that will bring our episode to a close. Um, Focaf, again, dude, thanks for coming on. We're going to have you on yes, again you so in like uh, a month yeah. of Sundays or whatever. But uh, um, No, um, I definitely would have enjoyed to talk more about like SMR or whatever. Um, but... I think got my points across. I think we had a good discussion about like the value community, and I think some of the benefits of a community. I will say though that like uh, SMR, one of these is going to write a thing about why I think SMR racers don't get memes made about them, and it's going to be a great oh, long. Oh, that's a really interesting. Uh, oh. <laughs> but this is the kind of silly stuff I want to do that I I need to make make sure I don't do. Because that's wasting time and not being productive with my real life responsibilities. Listen, listen. But if you do do those things, should you do those things, please, 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 like drop me a link or waffle link so that we can uh, we can discuss that because that is that yeah. is I'm actually curious about that now. Right. Because that is something um, unfortunately really I'm gonna you know my in, in my real life I do like social science stuff cool. like uh, I, I research like you know people. So unfortunately, I can never stop being fascinated by how people react to what are essentially uh, literal marbles and pretending that they're athletes. I so, love that. Like, I love psychologically, that. it's so interesting to me, and I just can't stop. So, <sighs> I, um, I mean, That's my you are you are far more experienced with social science than I am. Of course, I'm not. I'm not. I, I didn't study that, but. Um, I, I'm of in the same mind as far as being fascinated by that. I feel I think half of the shows we've had have not maybe not half, but at least a third have like not even really covered much of the stuff that happened in the past week. But we just like talk about what makes good Marvel sports. What do people like about Marvel sports? Why do people watch Marvel sports? Why do people like Marvel sports? What chaos Marvel chaos theory? One of my favorite favorite things to bring up on this channel. Um, I love that stuff. One of the fast most fascinating things to me about Marvel sports and like the reason I'm so more invested in this than any other community, um, any other like sports is because of how new and fascinating and silly it is, but it's still so like, it's still so real. It's still such an actual like real thing that brings people together as opposed to just staying like a silly video. So yeah, we, we, we discussed that here a lot and I'd love to hear all that, that analysis. But um, <laughs> with that being said, Vogaf, thank you for coming on. We will have you on again, and uh, next time, hopefully, it won't be right after a ridiculous, crazy JMRC breakup, and we can talk more about the Savage Betas and how they have a lot of work to do in this Marble League if they're going to make up for uh. the atrocity, which was this uh, season of Marble the One. Um, Yikes. Yeah. Oh, my God, rapidly. I, I, I said it, I've said it once. Say it again. I'm gonna, we'll end this episode in this likeness. I better not see rapidly on the Marble One team in Season 3. I just better not.
I just better not see him. Um, but actually, Waf, if you don't mind, I, w- I want to take out this episode today. I want to do the final oh. line because I have a special uh, special twist on it. All right. Um, okay. All right. So any any last words from YouTube before I take us out? Uh, no. <laughs> Great words. No. <laughs> yeah, th- 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 thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's been thanks a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> All right. Faux calf, Marble Sports fans. Mm-hmm.